In this video log, we are going to be highlighting the sites of Luxor. We're going to be in the town of Luxor. We're going to be looking at all of the surrounding cities where there's things to see, things to do. And I can tell you, uh, it is amazing. The rich history that is located here. Now we've been doing this uh, travel on a Viking cruise, river cruise, the MS Antares. And what a way to see all of the various sites around here, be able to get off the boat, go out and tour, and then come back to the boat. So I'm gonna be making a video on the ship itself and it'll give you a taste of what it'll be like to be on a Viking Nile river cruise here in Egypt. Just fabulous. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna really try to condense it down so I don't bore you, it's not too long. And please consider subscribing to the channel and you'll get future notifications on some of these travels. Thank you. The temple here is really amazing. I mean, it is so well preserved for how old it is. Uh, thoroughly impressed. I've heard about it, Karnak. And I'm not talking about on Johnny Carson, but uh, this is something to see. The Karnak Temple Complex, commonly known as Karnak, means a fortified village. And it comprises a vast mix of decaying temples, chapels, pylons, and other buildings. It's located in the city of Luxor. Construction at the complex began during the reign of King Sensuit in the Middle Kingdom, which was around 2000 to 1700 BC and continued into the Ptolemaic Kingdom from 305 to 330 BC. And in 1979, it was inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list along with the rest of the city. So another place to see when in Luxor is the Luxor Temple. A massive temple here. We're gonna do a tour now. Let's take a look at it. But again, one of the things you wanna see when you are in Luxor, this is a must see. Luxor Temple is located on the east bank of the Nile River and was built to celebrate Egypt's Opet Festival. Most of the temples of Luxor in its present state was built by Amenhotep, the third in 1410 to 1372 BC in three phases. The two primary cult temple on the east bank are known as the Karnak and Luxor. Unlike the other temples in the Thebes, Luxor temple is not dedicated to a cult god or a sacred version of the Pharaoh and death. The Luxor temple is constructed of sandstone blocks from Nubia in the southwest Egypt. The temple complex is surrounded by mud brick walls, symbolic of the separation between the world and the sacred realm of the gods. I have to say, seeing this temple at night was just breathtaking with the remarkable, beautiful lighting. I have to say, this temple is absolutely stunning. The clarity of the drawings that are in the stone, uh, it's just mind blowing. So this is yeah, kind of beyond words here. Today we're at the Valley of the Kings, which is about a little under an hour drive outside of Luxor. Um, this is where some of the most famous monuments are, the most famous tombs here. One of being King Tut. Uh, there is a charge to go into the actual tomb. You can go into it. But There's the charge be expected to pay $20. Also something else, this is a tip when you're uh, over here. If you want to uh, take your camera, your video camera in, it's another $20 charge or 300 Egyptian pounds. But your cell phone camera, it's not no charge, it's free. So, so hope you enjoy this video of the Valley of the Kings. Okay, we're entering Ramsey the sixth tomb right now. And uh, this is included with the price of admission. You get four uh, tombs to visit, four being if you buy the King Tut ticket, which is extra. But you get the other three are all included. So this, as you can see, it's absolutely amazing. The colors that are still uh, on the uh, etchings on the wall. The warrior king Amenhotep was the fourth ruler of the 19th century dynasty in ancient Egypt who ruled for 10 years until his death in 1202 BC. 
Now we're going to drop deeper down into the tomb. Hope there's no earthquake. Kidding. And here we are at the bottom of the tomb. This is what it looks like. Okay, the next tomb we're going to go in is King Maren Bata. And it's located right next to King Tut's tomb. I would have liked to have filmed in King Tut, but once again, I found out absolutely no filming inside that particular tomb. Kind of the same as the museum over there, but I'm sure there's pictures of it somewhere. So let's have a look and see what this one looks like. Hard to believe that this chamber was just carved out of the side of a mountain in solid rock. It is amazing. I have to say, this one is even deeper than the last, but definitely worth doing. So here we are at the bottom of the tomb. Again, as I keep saying over and over, very, very amazing. And uh, it's like, I don't know which adventure gets better on this visit here, even in Cairo. I think this one's starting to top it. So you just came out of King Tut's tomb. Try to say that fast five times. Anyway, what did you think? What was your impression? Well, they actually don't know if the mummy's going to be in there or not, so it's kind of a guessing game. And it's a little bit expensive here in Egypt to pay for it, but you only get the experience once to just go into his tomb. So as I was walking down, you see the sarcophagus, and then as I turned the corner, um, his mummy was there. And, it, you know, you, you can't wrap your head around the absolute amazing experience this would be. So I highly recommend that you do pay, I think it's maybe 20 American dollars, uh, to go inside and take the chance. Um, his life and the afterlife in pictures is depicted around him in colors and it's brilliant. And uh, what an emotionally moving experience it was. Highly recommend it. One of the things I really like is you don't have to walk all the way up the hill to get to the Valley of the Kings. They got this Tonka toy that we ride on, electric train, because they are going green here in Egypt. And this, we're going through the market here. You kind of run, like, it's like running the gauntlet. You got to learn the words to say, La Chakran. So, and then that means, no thank you. But, still doesn't do you any darn good. Uh, one. One dollar. That's good one. One dollar. La Hi. La, la. Nine. One million dollars. Nine. Try a little German, see if that works. Nine. Hello. So another spot you're going to visit here in Luxor is Valley of the Queens. We just saw Kings, now we're over at the Queens. And if you look around, the hillside is dotted with tombs everywhere. So in the tomb that we went and visited, Queen Nefertari, she was the wife of Ramsey II. This tomb is a highlight, very limited number of people that get to go in. Be aware, the ticket prices are 1,400 Egyptian pounds, which works out to almost uh, $95 per ticket. But it's by far the most well-preserved. Now, I wasn't allowed to video in there uh, because I have a video camera. But again, the rules are crazy. If you have a cell phone, then you can video on that. So hopefully I can steal some footage from somebody around here and let you see that. So we'll see.
put the tomb of Queen Nefaria on your list as a must-see. Nefaria was the first queen and the most beloved wife of Ramses II. Not only does she have one of the most exquisite tombs in the valley of the kings and queens, but Ramses II also honored her by building her a temple in Abu Simbul, which is coming up in this video. I have to say this tomb has a big, I can't believe what I'm seeing factor. The level of details is amazing and the colors are more vibrant than I saw in any of the other tombs or temples or pyramids in Egypt. Today we are in the province of Klena. And Klena, which is spelled Q-E-N-A, and we're at the Dendera Temple. I'm gonna take a quick tour of this and see what it's all about. We are here literally with no other people around except for the maintenance yards getting a VIP tour. I don't know what we did to uh, have this honor bestowed on us. And this temple here dates back to 2300 BC. Numbers you can uh, hardly make sense of in your head. The reason it's not so crowded here today is because the temple is so far out of the way, most people won't take the time to drive here. So, really enjoying what we're seeing so far. Since the most ancient times, Deandra was destroyed and rebuilt several times. However, the present complex dates from the late Roman periods. This explains the prevalence and magnificently scenic style less severe than that of the oldest Egyptian temples. And this is the god of entertainment and pleasure. Definitely a uh, job I wouldn't mind having. It looks funny, right? Um. Okay, in these etchings, if you look th to the very left, that one is Cleopatra. To the right is her member of the staff. And if you look down here, that is her son. Do you recall? These are all of the servants. This was carved at a time when she was having her affair with Mark Anthony after Julius Caesar. This is the interior of the temple. The supports that go up apparently are solid granite and they are just massive. Up here on the ceiling, basically it's a giant horoscope, but you can't really see it because it's just a little too dark in here. So today we're in the town of Esna, uh, right on the Nile River, and we're heading up to have a look at the temple, and then after that we're going to come back to this bazaar, which is kind of bizarre, and we're going to do some shopping, which that's always a challenge in itself. Anyway, so hope you enjoy uh, this segment of the video. Keep watching, and uh, we'll try to make it as interesting as possible. Thanks for watching. So this is the Esna Temple, E-S-N-A. This is the one we're about to go in and have a quick look at. The Temple of Esna dedicated the god Kanum and was remarkable for the beauty of its site and the magnificence of its architecture. It was built of red sandstone and its entrance consisted of six rows of four columns each with lotus leaf capitals, all of which, however, differed from each other. The temple contains very late hieroglyphic inscriptions dating from the reign of Decius from around 249 to 251 AD. Now we're tur touring the beautiful town of Esna. You can see the different colored doors. Um, we're walking down. We're going to spend lots of money and we're having a great time. <laughs> Okay, we're standing in front of this big bale of cotton. It's uh, some of the finest cotton in the world. Uh, people from uh, all over the world buy the Giza cotton. It's really soft. Uh, new bridal couples always want the, the uh, stability of the cotton. So here we got a fabric shop that uh, they do wedding dresses and other such things. This is where they make the falafels here in town, in Esna and we are gonna have them later on this afternoon. Actually a delicious Egyptian cuisine. Yeah, one of them. Nice. 
هو الجمل ده عنده كام سنة؟ ده بتاع ثلاث سنين انا. I'd walk a mile for a camel. This is a 600 year old oil press. They make oil out of lettuce seed. So, uh, the negotiation, we had one negotiator for five people. Um, and it was very interesting because they were all friendly, but then they got us in a group and they started negotiating and then they became angry and the prices kept going up and down. The end result was they were angry, but then when they, once they made the deal, big smiles on their faces and we started giving money away. And I think we paid too much. So today we're going to be flying over to Abu Simul to see the temple over there. We're currently, I mean, Aswan right now and apparently it's enough to take about a half hour flight to get over there so we'll see how that goes and hopefully you're enjoying the video so I'm here at the Abu Simbul temple which is still considered in the province of Aswan However, it's a, uh, as you saw a little earlier, it's a bit of a plane fight, 30 minutes down here, but you know, real smooth, easy to get to. When you walk up on this thing, come around the corner, it is absolutely stunning. We're right on the lake, Lake Nassar. Now, keep in mind, I have footage of the lake and that was oh, 260 miles away from here. So, to say this is not a giant lake, that's an understatement. It's absolutely massive. Uh, I understand no video inside with cameras, but we're going to do our best to get some. During his reign, Ramses II embarked on an extensive building program throughout Egypt and Nubia, which Egypt controlled. Nubia was very important to the Egyptians because it was a, it was a source of gold and many other precious trade goods. Therefore, the king built several grand temples there in order to impress upon the Nubians Egypt might, and he also wanted to Egyptianize the people of Nubia. The most prominent temples are these two rock cult temples of Abu Simbel at the border between Lower Nubia and Upper Nubia. Okay, so I snuck a little video inside there. Yeah, very impressive, uh, very beautiful temple. All these temples, it's kind of hard to figure out which one's the best because they all seem to top the next one. These two temples I've shown you are the Great Temple, which is dedicated to Ramses II, and the smaller temple dedicated to his chief wife, Queen Nefertaria. We know that construction of the temple complex started in approximately 1264 BC and lasted for about 20 years until 1244 BC. It was known as the Temple of Ramses, and as I said, this was just breathtaking to look at and walk through. Seeing these temples is well worth the flight down to Aswan. So now we're going to the Temple of Philae. And one of the things we're obviously we're gonna take, we have our life vest. And besides having our life vests, we have a lot of vendors too. Nothing changes. If you're in for a map of the Nile, this is the place to get it. So as I said before, we're heading to the Hile, it's spelled P-H-I-L-A-E, temple. The only way to get there is by water. So we got the water taxi heading over. The temple of Philae was originally built to honor the goddess Isis this was the last temple built in the classical Egyptian style. Construction began around 690 BC and it was one of the last outposts where the goddess was worshipped. And one of the tips that I meant to give you, I can't remember if I did in any of the other videos, but when even here at the temples, if you have to go to the toilet, use the restroom at all, be prepared to tip. Everywhere when you have to go to the restroom, pretty much unless you're in your own hotel, you're going to have to tip. Typically like a dollar and uh for you know a couple of you up to four but just something to be prepared for uh and ladies uh, make sure you bring your own wipes because you're not going to find toilet paper in there so Philae is considered to be one of the most picturesque ruins of the others in the surrounding area since Philae was said to be one of the burying places of osiris 
It was held in high reverence by both the Egyptians to the north and the Nubians to the south. It was deemed profane for any priest to dwell there and was accordingly sequestered and designated the unapproachable. It was reported too that neither birds flew over it nor fish approached its shores, which is a story I'm not sure that I quite believe, but that's what I was told. Here we are in Edfu, and we are going to take a carriage ride over to the temple. If you can't guess the name of the temple, it's the Edfu Temple. So, we're going to see how this one goes. It's supposed to be a fantastic temple, and looking for another exciting day in Egypt. <laughs> All this group is caring for me, for my group that is nice, good. All this good. So at this particular temple, what we do is a carriage ride both ways. Apparently a little bit too far to walk, and not far enough for a bus. So, pretty comfortable. Now we're in high gear now. Hang on boys, here we go. So here we are, we're inside Edfu Temple. This is the beginning of it. Uh, it looks pretty massive. These are the ancient walls. They literally surrounded this entire uh, temple. They're still standing. So this particular temple is one of the largest temples in Egypt. It's number two to Karnak uh, temple, which we saw earlier in the video. This temple was started 2300 BC, but it wasn't finished until about 200 BC. So definitely got some uh, old uh, digs around here. When you stand next to these temple walls, it dwarfs you in size. I tried to imagine the labor of the people building these monuments, and I'm amazed by the attention to detail that they had. When you look at the columns inside, you'll note that all of them are different, with different markings on them and different caps at the tops. The inscriptions on its walls provide important information on language, myth, and religion during the Hellenistic period of Egypt. This temple was built between 237 and 57 BC and is considered one of the best preserved shrines in Egypt. It is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. Well, that was an interesting find in the temple, and now we're on our way back into town. My name is Mahmoud. Welcome to Egypt. It's yeah. nice, beautiful. And he's a trusty uh, carriage driver. I hope you enjoyed the sights of Luxor and the surrounding areas. These tombs and temples are some of the most amazing sights that I have ever seen and seeing it from a Viking now river cruise even made it better. Please take a minute to leave a comment on what you thought about the video and your experiences, especially if you've been to Egypt. I do like the feedback. Also, please take a second to subscribe so you'll receive future notifications of new videos that are coming out. I want to thank you for watching Pat's Adventures and please take care.